Now this is a very interesting thing. In Europe, for instance, Jacquard was a very uh, interesting and innovative French engineer. Now, those of you who know the uh, art of hosiery knitting, you know, the ladies uh, do the knitting of the sweaters. Okay, there are some knitting machines also. So that hosiery knitting machine, what it does is that it has got a shuttle which is moved left to right. Okay, there is also the thread of the wool. And then there are needles which are up and down like this. There are two states. Okay, and some needles are in this position, some needles are in this position. And the thread is woven around it actually. So you will find that depending on these positions, the pattern of that row of stitches will come about. So if you want a stitch pattern, you will find that you have to set those needles in a certain fashion. So what somebody who was very inventive, what he did was that he got a plastic sheet and every row there are some punched holes there. So some, hole, some positions there will be punched holes, some positions there will not be there. And this card is put at the back and is indexed one row at a time. So depending on the punched holes, you will find that the needles are set up and down. And every time when you move, you will find that it gets indexed by one line. So effectively, the pattern that you want to get on your sweater is coded in the form of that punched holes in the card. Okay? Now that punched hole sheet is a program, is the information which is pre-coded actually. The same principle was used by Jacquard for the looms. If you look at your saris and the patterns on the saris, etc., you will find that they are also based on the same principle of having to do the adjustments of the needles and then moving the shuttle. You will find that there you move it, the, there is a piece of wood which moves back and forth actually, sort of. The same principle you will find on the top here, you have got those the uh, the punched hole she wooden planks are there actually sort of now this principle and the jacquard's loom is on the left hand side so you will find that the loom was uh, you can say programmable room was created now obviously there was uh, this principle is very important in fact in the good old days in the europe the churches will require artists to play the organ and the organ playing became very critical so what somebody did was he got wooden planks and he punched holes in the wooden planks and there were uh, pegs which will be inserted up and down. So if the card moves, the play pe pegs will go up and down. And this movement of the pegs through the linkages was connected to the keyboard of the organ. So if the peg goes down, then the linkage will press the key. And that way, if I move this set of cards, you will find that the organ will play the music. The same principle. If you go to the Franklin Museum in Philadelphia, you will find that there is a big drum and it has got a lot of grooves in it. And the grooves have got pegs. And depending, if you rotate the drum, the pegs will move in some fashion. Okay? Now this, this movement of the pegs is through the linkages connected to the hand of a doll. And as you start rotating this drum, the doll will draw the picture. So you will get a beautiful picture at the end of one rotation. And the drum moves very, very slowly, actually, sort of. You know. So you will find that it gives you a picture. So what is a program? Program is like the geometry of the groove on that cylinder. The program is nothing but the whole pattern in the hosiery uh, plastic sheet. The program is nothing but the whole pattern that you have got on the jacquard loom. And Jacquard used this idea to create a variety of patterns that were used for printing different kinds of, or making different kinds of uh, designs of cloth. And this is also a computer. This, the basic principle of computer is also now available in these forms, actually. There are, next thing I want to, after that there was a name of Charles Babbage. He's a very important person. He's considered as one of the pioneers of computer science. He was a rich fellow. Every Sunday he will have a party. Uh, the place where the party will be held is called saloon or salon. And uh, there he will invite all the rich people and he will show his contraptions. So he created first a contraption called a difference engine. 
And what is the difference engine? I will illustrate to you very simply that he said that I want to develop an engine which will put out a sequence of numbers such as 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 4 square, 5 square, etc. This will be put out by the machine. Why is it called a difference engine? I will show you in a minute. If you look at this, we know the answers. It is 4, 9, um, 16, 25, etc. Now take the difference between the two successive numbers. 1 and 4, the difference is 3. 4 and 9, the difference is 5. 9 and 16, difference is 7. 16 and 25, difference is 9 and so on. Now take further difference between the successive numbers. And that is 2, 2, 2, 2, etc. Okay. So he went backwards, assuming that the successive number difference is 2, all that you have to do is to add to it. I have got a register and 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 2, 7, 7 plus 2, 9. I record them as the numbers in between. Now I start again adding 1 plus 3, 4, 4 plus 5, 9, 9 plus 7, 16, 16 plus 9, 25. So he says you got the number. So all that he has to do is to start with the sequence of number 2 and then the difference was exploited for generating this. Now what happened with the difference engine that, uh, and he used a lot of these uh, gears and pulleys and wheels and etc. It was all a mechanical contraption. The details are given in the book actually. Those of you who want to build such a machine, you can build it today and the details are available to you. Now what he did was that every time you have to do such a thing, you have to develop a new machine. You have to develop a design a new machine. He says, this is a very difficult thing. How can you have for every mechanic, every numerical problem, you got to design and develop a machine that is not possible. So he said, why not we have a universal machine which will take care of all of it. And that was called as analytical engine. You can see how complicated it is actually. And it has got cams, pulleys, shafts and the registers, etc. The whole concept of a register came along these mechanical devices, actually. Sort of, you know. So this analytical, and he will exhibit this. So the first time when he exhibited, the British government gave him a big money grant to develop it further. Okay. Then he started asking more and more money. The British government said, no, no, we don't have that much of money. So he will call all these rich people, show it to them, and they will say, you like it? They said, yeah, yeah. Then give me some more money to build it, actually. So he used to get this funded through the rich people in Britain, actually, sort of, you know. But obviously, these being electromechanical or not even electro, it was purely mechanical devices, obviously slow, rickety, rackety, cranky, very inflexible in terms of programmability. They could not move forward. Now I want to come back to where I studied. I studied using a slide rule. Now this is a contraption which is so wonderful that my entire four year of engineering, there was a company called Aristo Studio, very famous German company. And the slide rule of the Aristo Studio was the best slide rule. If you want to do multiplication, you want to do very complicated things, logarithms, uh, e raised to x, whatever you want, everything was available on the slide rule. And I'm trying to get one, uh, because nowadays it is so extinct that to get one is becoming very difficult. But I would say that what you do through logarithmic tables, you are also using log tables. I'm sure in your 10th, 11th, 12th, you must have used log tables to do the calculations. Sometimes they don't allow calculator in an exam hall. And therefore, you have to be proficient in the log tables. So log tables and slide rules were also devices for doing computational work actually in some form.